Okay, good morning, Oak River. Uh, just wanted to share real quick some activities going on with the youth group. Uh, we are going bowling today, so if you have a team that is wanting to go bowling, uh, we covered all the costs today for, for that trip. After church, Kathy Schaefer has been so amazing. She fixed us some uh, barbecue and some things for the youth, uh, some chips, mac and cheese, baked beans. I think all kinds of sides to go with it. So we have food prepared for the youth group today. Any that want to go at about 1.20, 1.30, we'll, uh, we'll load up in the church van and head to Genau City where we're going to bowl from 2 to 4. And then just a reminder, we don't have evening services or anything uh, today uh, for the youth or for the church. So uh, also, we've adopted two seniors um, from Cedar Ridge Nursing Home. And so um, if you could do remember, we, we talked through some of the things they could do, some soft snacks. Uh, what size clothing they wear, those kind of things. If you could remember by Wednesday, either bring some money, uh, just a few dollars, um, or bring a gift so we can help a couple of the seniors at Cedar Ridge Nursing Home. Last week, I learned a lot about the hierarchy of the church last Thursday by attending the Christmas parade. Um, the missions team did an amazing job with the float. If you haven't seen it on YouTube, it is just pictures, absolutely gorgeous float, amazing representation uh, for the church. But I realize senior pastor gets the easy work. So he, he puts on a candy cane suit. He stands up there. He holds a microphone. He sings a song. <laughs> but you did it so easy. <laughs> and so he gets the easy part. He just gets to be pulled 10 blocks down the road. Now, the youth pastor gets to be parade walker. Now, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't train for it. I didn't carb load for it. I wasn't ready for what was to come. Now, at the beginning, very simple. The youth group had about half the walkers there. I was super proud of them and their parents. We, uh, we began, and, and the treadmill was on like a one, and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm passing out candy. Merry Christmas, everybody. We turned the corner, and it, it pushed up to a two or three and <laughs> moved a little quicker. Legs are getting a little warm, but still handing out candy. The next thing I know, I turn and I look. And our float's like two and a half blocks down the road. <laughs> now, the young ones were smart. They just took off. I kept texting Eric, said, hey, is Gage with you? But in that short amount of time, I got so far behind. I was a member of three different churches, two political campaigns, <laughs> and a DJ for 98.7. So um, I'll be better prepared next year. I know my place. But... Thank you. Thank you. You did, you did notice he said he texted Eric, and Eric was keeping up with us. So uh, just to uh, keep that in mind. But thank you, everyone who came out. It was a great crowd to come out, and we passed out 2,000 uh, candy cane uh, with the candy cane story, and we passed out 1,200 uh, pop-up cards as we went through the parade. So I appreciate all who participated. Some participated by uh, putting things together prior to the, uh, the parade and getting all that prepared. And then those who uh, came along and yes, Kent and I were candy canes and we kept budding hooks. Uh, if you saw the tree in the middle of the uh, <laughs> float, it and I had several encounters. Um, so, and uh, Tabby and, and uh, uh, Kelly, that's her name, uh, were gingerbread men. And John joined us, and the kids thought he was Olaf. He was a uh, uh, snowman. So he was the most popular of all. So, but uh, what a great opportunity to represent our church in our city parade. And... Uh, we saw many people, and many people were affirming us with thumbs up and for singing and, and uh, telling the story, even in a Christmas parade. Let me just clear up something that evidently I've told two or three different stories and two or three different people this, the thing, so everyone listen at once. Two o'clock this afternoon, the choir will be doing their musical presentation at Charleston First Church. This evening, there are no activities here at Elk River. This evening, 6 o'clock, no activities. So if you want to uh, join a family member at another church or sit by the fire, that's up to you. 
I'm not holding you accountable for anything. So there you go. <clears throat> and uh, as we're wrapping up and coming through this Christmas season, isn't it crazy the way and how fast things are going? But uh, keep, your, keep your eyes and your thoughts uh, on all that's going on. And the ladies had a wonderful time Friday evening. About 60 ladies gathered together and um, the men had to stay in the kitchen except to serve. And uh, they did a wonderful job, but uh, from what I understand, the ladies laughed a lot. And uh, it was probably at our expense. But uh, no, it was a, a good evening for them. And so uh, be, be in prayer for the Ward family, and we'll be praying for them in just a moment. But let's join together in worshiping the Lord today. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing. Songs and more, our fields and floods, from seals and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, a sing of all joy, and all the glory. Jesus. 
Doesn't matter what we're facing, doesn't matter what we're going through, doesn't matter how big or how small, he cares about everything that we care about. Sing this chorus with me. Jesus, 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 there's just something about. unexpected from human terms but I can say with in my heart I have no doubt on where he will spend eternity I'm so thankful for the privilege of him being a part of our life as a church and my life my family's life but remember to pray for the family it's a, a difficult time as we've shared together as with the family, we realize that he has received the ultimate healing. No more COPD. No more post-traumatic stress syndrome. No more anxiety. No more heart conditions. So we can be grateful. We're the ones whose hearts hurt. But God promises that he's able to help us and to help Jackie and the family during this difficult time. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And he's with us even now. So let me remind you of the service, which will be Tuesday. From 10 until 11.30 will be a visitation. 11.30 will be the service. And 1 o'clock there will be a military burial at the uh, military cemetery in, in uh, Dunbar. Be sure to let the family know of your love and your prayers. Can I say to you, it's more important two or three weeks from now, a month from now, to express your love and care. You see, right now, everybody's around. Right now, everybody's expressing heartache and sympathy. But it's the days after that we need to be the family of God that we are. So pray for that family in these next couple of days. Marianne, ask us to pray for Connie and David. We're facing some physical challenges. Remember Dr. C. Harold Smith, who's in the hospital with COVID. And uh, Jennifer and Glenn Thaxton, who stay with him as caregivers, uh, have COVID as well. Remember to pray for Scott Chandler is in ICU with COVID. Victoria England's sister, Wanda, is in the hospital with COVID. And then this week, um, we found out that Joanne Lucas is going to be facing open heart surgery. Uh, one day this week, Thursday this week. 
and um, she's had to remain in the hospital because they have to take her off blood thinners and uh, uh, it is a major artery that is blocked so we need to be lifting her up in prayer as well and uh, remember Terry Schrader her daughter uh, fell and uh, broke her humorous bone and uh, we want to uh, pray for her as well Glada took a little fall yesterday as well didn't break anything but it's pretty uh, beat up a little bit so pray for Glada as well we're going to sing this chorus again I'm going to ask uh, Vicki if she would just come and stand here and represent her mom today. We're going to anoint her and pray for Joanne a peace and a healing if it's by surgery, but that God's touch would be upon her as well. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Father, we come before you today grateful for that name of Jesus, that name of Jesus that can change, transform, and make us whole. Today, Lord, there are so many things that are on our hearts and our minds, and we pray, Lord, especially for the Ward family. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance of knowing what his relationship was with you. Thank you for the assurance of eternal life. Be their strength. Be their hum comfort. Help them during this time. We think of Mary Ann's friends who need a special touch from you. Jennifer and Glenn Thaxton and Dr. Smith and Scott Chandler. Wanda, who are battling COVID. We pray your touch upon their physical bodies. And Lord, today, we pray especially for Terry as she has had this broken bone. I pray, Lord, you would help with the pain. I pray, Lord, you would help in the healing process. I pray, Lord, your touch would be upon her even this morning. And Lord, today we come to you on behalf of Joanne. Lord, she went in not necessarily expecting the news that she received. But God, I'm so thankful that there's nothing that surprises you. You knew all the details. You know all the concerns. And I pray today that in that hospital room, you will bring her a peace that only you can provide. I pray, Lord, as she has to patiently wait until Thursday, Lord, that you would give her comfort and strength. 
Lord, that you would be the lifter of her head in the times of discouragement. And Father, we pray for that surgery day. We pray, Lord, for your hand to be upon the doctors, the surgeons, the nurses. And Father, we pray for your touch to be on Joanne. Thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for her dedication, not only to you, but to the church and to her family. Bring the family the peace and the strength that they need during this time. We thank you, Lord, for your touch on Woody and Kathy as they continue to heal. You have been so good to us. And we are grateful. But it is true. When the angel appeared to Mary and said, And you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we speak that name to bring comfort, healing, and peace. Hear the very cries of our hearts today. These things we pray. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. And sing that chorus again. Jesus. 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 There's just something about that good to be in the house of the Lord. And what a joy it is. Last year, we were unable to do a whole lot of things. The choir began rehearsing, and the choir's been singing in our service now for, for several weeks, months, and um, they have prepared a musical for us that I'm sure will touch your heart. Listen closely to the words. Understand why we celebrate and what a privilege it is that Jesus came for you and for me. Amen.
This story begins with silence. A long silence that lasted 400 years, four centuries of waiting to hear from the God we worshiped. God had not spoken. No prophet had given us a fresh word from him. No king had showed us the way to him. We prayed, we offered our sacrifices, and we kept the festivals and holy days. But there had been only silence and waiting. As we waited, our people looked to the ancient texts that told of another time of silence and waiting, when there was a vast nothingness until a great word was spoken and his spirit moved. God creating and breathing life into the world. We looked to our ancient heroes of faith and the centuries of slavery in Egypt. We remembered the night of our liberation when the death angel passed over. We relived the Red Sea crossing and our wandering in the wilderness when Jehovah was life. A succession of kings ruled over us, and the more we turned away from putting God on the throne, the more desperately we needed him. Finally, the nation was destroyed, not by enemies who conquered us, but by our own unfaithfulness to the one who had given us everything. Yet even in our destruction, God had promised we would not be forgotten. A son would be given, a savior would come. The silence would be broken, and God would speak. Every longing we needed, we had, would be met. His spirit breathed new life into our world. At last, the way would be over. Every prophecy would be fulfilled. And the most amazing part of it was that the two of us would be chosen to help bring it to pass. Sins release us. Well. 
Who would have imagined that God would break his silence in the way he did? Or she would hear his message from an angel's lips. He said, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son. Call him Jesus. The Spirit gave me the words to answer. At the very moment Joseph was weighing what to do about my situation, he would be told in a dream, don't be afraid, Mary will have a son, call him Jesus. He, he will save, save his, his people, people from, from their, their sins. sins. Oh, God. 
Caesar's decree came at the worst possible time. Mary was nearing the delivery of her child. Our journey to Bethlehem to register was difficult for her. Everything she had done was difficult. Already she had endured scorn, mistrust, and danger. But when God called, she simply answered yes. Some are called to distant lands, some to exile far from home, to wandering the wilderness, to destinations yet unknown. But when is God? What else can the answer be? You put your life into His hands and leave. the nine months of being an outcast and the target of endless gossip. Faith had given me peace when Joseph doubted me. Faith had provided strength and courage as we traveled to Bethlehem. I had faith. I trusted God. Still, I will confess that there were moments I wondered about a God who would give such a task to someone like me. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with 
the babe inside And I wonder what I've done Holy Father, you have come And chosen me now to carry your son I am waiting in a silent prayer and I am frightened by this load I bear in a world as cold as stone must I walk this path alone be with me now be with me now breath of heaven hold me together before Breath of heaven, light in my darkness, pour over me your holiness for your holy. Breath of Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place? But I offer all I am for the mercy. Jesus came into the world in the exact way God had planned it all along. In spite of the difficult circumstances, everything about him was perfect.
Suddenly, there were shepherds peering through the doorway of the stable. When they saw Mary and me and then the baby lying in the feeding trough, they came in and fell to their knees before him and they worshipped him. Many years later, John would write, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And us, we beheld his glory. Mary and I were the first to see it. Then the shepherds who came from the hills that night caught a glimpse. And ever since then, people have found their way to him, one way or another. When they see him for who and what he really is, they love him. For what would we have done if he hadn't come to us the way he did? Tears are falling, hearts are breaking, how we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy child.
We didn't know it, but wealthy men were already on their way to honor him. They brought precious gifts to lay at his feet. Heaven's son was worthy of even more. He deserves everything we hold dear. So we let go of all we value, all we cling to. We lay down anything that would keep us from surrendering our lives to him. Because the truth is, he is the only treasure that really matters.
Can we praise the Lord this morning? Worthy, worthy is our King. Amen? Amen. Worthy, worthy. What if he hadn't come in the way that he did? Where would you be? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the truth. The truth that we have heard today. God, your plan was perfect. It wasn't what man may have expected. But you knew what was needed. Thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of turning our lives as a treasure over to you, just as the wise men did. I pray, Father, that you would help us as we continue through this month of December and as we we focus on celebrating Jesus and his birth. Help us to count the privileges, to count the cost, and to sing, worthy, worthy are you, King Jesus. Worthy are you, Jesus, of all of our praise. I pray, Lord, that the words of this musical will have stuck in our hearts. The narration would be in our minds from now until the day that we celebrate. Thank you for this gift that we have received today. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Can we show our appreciation to our choir and... Kelly and the sound and media people. It's been a long time coming, but thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to be back to some sense of normal? Um, Last year, we couldn't have a choir. Last year, so many things. We're still being cautious, and we're still doing what we can do. But the Lord intends for us to continue to move forward, sharing the gospel, using our talents, and doing all that we can do. Thank you for being here today. And I trust that uh, if you don't have a home church, you'll join us next Sunday for our Christmas celebration, the 19th. It's always a great day to gather. And if you don't have anything to do at 2 o'clock, 200 Park Avenue. It's where you want to be. It's daylight, so it's okay. (laughs) 200 Park Avenue, it's fine. I I was there at 8.30 uh, last night or whatever time. It's all right. Some of you grew up on the west side, and that's okay. The west side's the best side, they used to say. So uh, let's just uh, continue, and as the choir presents the gospel there at First Church and uh, I trust that it will bless them. But thank you for being here today, and thank you for celebrating Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, tell them Merry Christmas, and may God bless you today.